Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we are going to continue our Learn Stats mini-series. We're going to go into the next one and that's going to be Descriptive Statistics. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, my own sound effects. All right, so if you want Learn Stats for your teaching and or your uh, statistical learning journey, you need to get yourself JASP 0.18.1, where uh, this was a hotfix to their 0.18 release, which introduced the data editor. Whoop, whoop. So if you want to engage with Learn Stats with me, then you just go to the plus option because all of these modules are pre-installed. You just need to press the check button and there it is. You check it and you're good to go. So again, 0.18.1 for all machines to be able to get the Learn Stats module. All right, so let's jump in to the Learn Stats module and um, I've got previous videos on all these. We're just going down the list in each of these videos. We're gonna click on descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics, okay. So the descriptive statistics, it's fairly simple. We've only got two uh, collapsible menus. I'm going to open up plots in this one. Okay. So by default, it's got the dot plot and nothing is going to be included in this dot plot because the descriptive statistics module is all user generated or and by default, that's the enter sequence here. And you can see it's a radio button or a random sample. Okay. Um, and a random sample will show you the dot plot right away. Um, which, you know, depends on how you want to do the, uh, description, how you want to do the, uh, teaching of this module or learning of this module. Now, if you're learning, a uh, random sample might be useful. If you're teaching, entering the sequence might be really useful. So uh, we are going to do the enter sequence and then see what it looks like with, uh, I'm probably going to duplicate this so we can look at it, what it looks like with a random sample as well. Now, before I put the uh, random sample in here, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got statistics to display, mean, median, mode, and all. So these are radio buttons. So you either display the mean or the median or the mode, or you can display all three. Unfortunately, you can't do combinations. I hopefully they change this to make them check boxes and get rid of all. So you can do mean and median, you can do median and mode, you can do mean and mode, you know, all of the combinations rather than just one or all three of them. So we're kind of just one of each or that. Now you'll notice here before I continue, the show explanation box checkbox is grayed out, which means we can't show the explanation. I think the devs are working on that much to the um, much the same way that they're working on the help document for, you know, on all of the modules, they have this eye. Some of them are good. Some of them are, are, are not so good. Um, but, you know, there you go. That's what you kind of have to contend with. So as far as learning these, maybe not so much all that helpful yet because we don't have the explanatory text, which hopefully is coming in another update, either in, uh, uh, an iterative update or a fresh 0 0.19 or something like that or 0 0.20. You know, something like that. All right, back to our options. Now, again, we have radio buttons for range, quartiles, or standard deviation. You can only choose one of these to show on the plot. So choose wisely. There is no all. And then we've got none. None is selected by default. So you can go through what happens with each of these. You know, maybe you're in a class and you're like, okay, let's take a look at what my mean does. And then we've got plots down here. We've got, by default, the dot plot, which is going to display our rug marks, which are going to be little ticks that are down here on the y-axis. And we can also get a histogram and bar plot, uh, histogram or bar plot. I guess this must be a, a, you know, a regional thing, a regional e English thing. Is it a histogram? Is it a bar plot? I guess we'll see. But I guess the ordering here is that the bar plot comes before the dot plot, which makes sense because this is on the left and this is on the right. You can either show counts or show density. It will not, will not show it on the dot plot. You can display rug marks, which again will be those little ticks at the bottom of the y axis or x axis, excuse me. And then you can do histogram bin width. By default, it will be Sturgis, but they've got Scott, Doan or Doan, Doani. Friedman, Diaconis, and then manual. And if you do manual, then you will have the opportunity to select your own bin width. Now, if you are one of my students, you learn how to set your class intervals or bin widths uh, first, and then you can choose how to graph that, right, with your, with your bin width. Now, the number of bins is just counting those class intervals. So you go, okay, so if I did by twos, my class intervals are by two. So how many do I have in this range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10. Okay, 10. That's how you, that's how you make it, right? So that's what would work. And then finally, you can change the, the uh, palette, colorblind, colorblind alt, viridis, ggplot2, and gray. Uh, gray would be just be gray scale. Okay, so no color, right? Um, so by default, it is the colorblind palette, although we'll have to see what greens and reds or uh, shades of red are doing on this graph to see whether or not we need colorblind alt, right? This is useful if you've got colorblind members in your audience. Okay, so let's enter some sequences and see what happens with the histogram bar plot and the dot plot. So I'm just going to do values between um, 1 and 10, and I'm going to... Um, just randomly pick numbers. And all you have to do is put a comma in between them. Not a lot. No, just, just, I guess one in nine, because I feel like, I don't feel like touching numbers. Okay. So nothing's going to change on your plots. I wish there was less space in between. I think something might appear in this space. My, my uh, statistics will appear in these spaces. 
So it does feel a little odd here. But you can see then you've got command enter to apply. Well, of course, I'm on a Mac, so that is definitely going to be command enter. If you are on Windows, that will this will show control enter to apply. OK, so C -R, uh, C -T -R -L, control enter to apply. You have to leave your cursor in there. You see it's blinking right there. Um, I have a couple of numbers that I did not put a comma in between. Let's just double check here. I'm going to slowly go through this magnified so I can see it a little bit better. Looks like I've got a bunch of single digit values all separated by a comma. All right, let's hit command enter, control enter. OK, and there we go. We've got our bar plot or our histogram. Um, now show counts, it's going to call it a bar plot, I guess. But if I did show density, it might convert this to a histogram. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what it's going to do. But here we have our observations. I'm um, not uh, entirely sure why our rug marks aren't showing. And that might be for the random sample. That might be for the random sample. And then here we have our dot plot. Now, if you're not familiar with the dot plot, dot plot is pretty much like a stem and leaf plot uh, where we've got the stem, which is zero. And then we've got the leaves, which are the dots themselves. So these are the amount of two. These are the amount of ones that I have. These are the amounts of twos that I have. I mean, it's it's really just another way to show frequency that shows countable frequency as opposed to a bar plot, which is sort of continuous frequency. All the values for between zero and five, let's say, for the value five appear in here. But of course, there are one, two, three, four, five. And that's going to be our that's going to be our mode. It looks like I didn't do that on purpose, but you know, there you go. Um, let me see. I'm curious. Can we edit these? No, we can. They're only images. They're not the normal plots that you get in like your descriptive statistics where you can edit the y and x axis. It's it's an image. OK, so be aware of that. You cannot change the counts, uh, the y axis or the observations, depending on what you do here. I don't think you'll be able to do it if we did random sample anyways. OK, so let's show some statistics. So we've got our plots. Let's show uh, what it looks like when we show mean mean by itself. OK. The mean is a 4.85, all right? And it puts the vertical line there, and then it does it here. And then on a dot plot, it puts a uh, diamond, I guess, OK? 4.85. Let's show the median. Median is going to be this green color. And they're all different colors, because if I, when, you see, when you see I select all, they will be all, uh, they will be all like that. Um, how many observations do I have? That's so funny. I don't, the median is five. I love it. The median and the mode are going to be the same. Excellent. Um, medians are uh, shown on dot plots as the circle value itself, which is why dot plots are a good way to show discrete countable things. And these little these little lines here that um, represent 50 below and 50 above. OK, so uh, half of the scores are this way, half of the scores are that way. And then mode, if we do this, it's going to be five again, right? So uh, it shows the mode by a horizontal line at the count itself. So the value is of the count. So the bar here is represented is representing five. And of course, there are five. And then mode again, and as you can see, it's represented by this little, uh, this little rectangle at the highest count level. And it just puts that value there. So the mode is five. And it tells you why it's this value is because there are five fives in my little distribution here. OK. And then if we do show all. It will put all of those things on there. Uh, now, your mode is a little bit covered by the median, and that's because they are the same value. But of course, we've got the mean represented in orange, median represented in green, and mode represented as purple. And this is of the colorblind palette, and I'll show you what the alt looks like at the end. And then here we have the mean represented by our diamond, which is slightly off again. It is a countable value on this distribution, but it is not a whole number on the dot plot. Uh, we've got our median represented with the, uh, I, I like to call this the uh, uh, circle with hands, right? Doing um, a little robot, maybe one hand up, one hand down. And then we've got our mode represented here. So that's what all shows. Now we can also look at range. OK, now these are all connected radio buttons. So we can only show central tendency uh, either one or all of them, or we can show a spread measure or nothing on the graphs at all. So range is going to show us the values, right? The max was nine, the min was one. And so the range is eight. That's the exclusive range, of course. Uh, if we added one, it would be an inclusive range of 10 or excuse me, um, nine. OK, uh, the ex exclusive range plus one. And then it shows here the min value is colored, right? The one of the dots is colored and the top, the the last nine will say is also colored here. So it really shows you the range. We can look at quartiles. I think the quartiles will look phenomenal. Uh, again, we have our quartiles represented. So our first quartile, the 25th percentile is three. So all values up to three. Our second quartile or the 50th percentile, which is also the median, is five. OK, boom there. And our third quartile or our 75th percentile is seven. So 25 percent are of the values are above it. I'm so glad I did this because look at this, all these even uh, all of these numbers. Right. And then to get to our IQR or our interquartile range is the third quartile minus the first quartile. So seven minus three is four. Same thing happens over here. We've got all of the same values. Interquartile range is four, although they changed the colors on me. Don't know if I like that. But again, with percentiles in dot plots, you get the little hands coming up, like uh, doing the robot dance or whatever for where these values actually live. So while the first quartile is represented by three, it is the first three of my three threes. 
And then the third quartile is seven. The value is seven, but it is actually the second of the sevens. Okay, so you can see that a little bit clearer on the dot plot. So again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six above it, and one, two, three, four, five, six below my first quartile, right? So that makes them even 25% on each side. Again, the first quartile is the 25th percentile. The second quartile is the median, and it is also the 50th percentile. And the third quartile is always the 75th percentile. And anything that ends with aisle means that we're talking about the values below that value and everything below it on the number line. Okay. And then we can also get the standard deviation, which is going to block out here are plus or minus two standard deviations represented in orange and brown here. So plus or minus one is orange and plus or minus two is represented as brown. And you can see here that the graph, the plus or minus or the minus two standard deviations from our mean of 4.85 is actually lower, uh, less than zero, which is not displayed on this graph. And these lines represent exactly where they are on the number line here, right? And, our, and it gives us a calculation of the standard deviation, which is 2.46. And it is displayed in very much the same way on the dot plot. But standard deviation doesn't work very well on the dot plot. It kind of just says, okay, these dots are within two standard deviations. These two sixes are fully within one standard deviation above the mean. And these four sevens are kind of as well. But what about these five fives? They're getting split here. Now, we don't have any issues with these threes and fours or these ones and twos. That line goes neatly in between them. But then we have this issue here. So dot plots kind of a bummer for showing these kinds of exact values, which is why you would usually use a histogram for this. And then, of course, we can do none. And that goes back to where we are, where we were at the tart, uh, at the tart, at the start. <laughs> so we have show counts for the histogram or we have show density, which is going to change the bar plot. I wish that said histogram slash bar plot. Rug marks aren't displaying either. And show density does not work. Okay. All right. So there's a little bug there. A little bug there. Um, oh, maybe because I have the bin width not set. Mm, no. No, it does not um, display the density function. So that's something to uh, either maybe that's a part of the enter sequence data input uh, issue. Maybe, maybe that. Okay. So let's um, duplicate this. Let's just add. Okay. So it's going to um, duplicate everything that I just had. But I'm going to do a random sample so we can see the difference. Okay. Oh, I can only have one. I think I can scroll up. Yeah, okay. So we're going to scroll, scroll up. It's just going to say copy of descriptive statistics. And so it just did a random sample. Now, I wasn't going to put 100 numbers in, but by default, the sample size is 100, okay? And the seed is 123. Again, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what the set seed is here, but 123 is on by default, okay? And it looks like our values are in between 0 and 10 again, which is quite interesting. But here we have 100 dots. It might not look like 100 dots, but it definitely is 100 dots. Okay, And um, we can either have a distribution type of discrete or continuous. So a discrete would be a binomial distribution or a Poisson distribution, Okay, which gives us a different histogram and a different uh, dot plot. Or we can go to continuous, and we can have a skewed normal distribution. I don't know why that's first. That's weird. Ah, there are the rug marks. So the rug marks apparently only appear on, on a a certain uh, options here with a random sample. So we've got uniform distribution, okay? Or we can have just a normal fancy, this is. Okay, and so the values do actually change. So it really just depends on what kind of distribution you want to show. And then of course the mean, median, and modes are all going to change. Ah, normal distribution changes this to histogram. There we go. And so we can change the, the histogram and it will show the density. It won't show the density on the dot plot though. There you go. That's why I didn't show it on my enter sequence. Good to know. So we've got a normal distribution. It's continuous, sample size is 100. This is what the density curve looks like. You can see it's a little weird, wonky looking. A little wonky looking, but the means, the median, the mode, they're all going to display in the exact same way as they did before. We've got our little uh, square diamond. Then we go up to median, right? It's going to put that little uh, median here. Now, the median is 0.62 because we've got 100, we've got 100 different values. And so what are my values here? Well, it's somewhere in between my 0.62. Then we've got in the mode, a la mode, all values unique, no mode defined. That's what's going to happen. Although I will say that if we do show counts, it still says that there is a high bar right here. There is a mode on this, I tell you. All values unique. Ah, it's because it probably did. The, yeah, it's not whole numbers. It's not whole numbers. If you want modes, then you got to have a discrete distribution. All will give us that thing. All modes unique. Yep, yeah, there we go. Um, the mean is 0.9. The mode is 0.62. So there, it's almost normally distributed. You can do range. See what our range is. 21.87, negative 23.09. That's what, why these values are unique. Quartiles can also do that. Okay, our 25, 50, and uh, 75 uh, quartiles gives us our IQR as well. And then those values here. Okay. And then standard deviation is going to look nice. Okay. All of those values in there. Dot plot doesn't really work with 100 all unique values. Although we get three standard deviations plus or minus three standard deviations represented by pink here. 
Okay. And then you can also do none. So a couple of ways to show folks how to actually um, look what descriptive statistics are doing, not only via the plots themselves, but you can just change what happens with either a random sample or you enter it in your sequence. Now, I'm sure that if I had a data set open, this select variable option would be available. And I'm pretty sure the select variable option will have similar to uh, similar options to enter sequence. So you're going to be able to get a bar chart or a bar, uh, a bar plot that looks like a histogram, but it's not really going to uh, be a histogram as far as the options are concerned here. So just be aware of that if you want to use that on your uh, on a variable that you've created and you've opened in into JASP here. So I would just I would just uh, say that that is an option. But then again, if that were something that I'd do, I'd probably just go into the descriptive module and have a little bit more free reign. So enter sequence works if you've got like five numbers and you want to show uh, stats learners um, what happens when you make modifications, like the appearance of an outlier or something like that. So this is more of like a I'm writing on the whiteboard. I'm writing on the whiteboard to show you what happens to descriptive statistics. But instead of writing on the whiteboard, I'm actually just showing you on the computer. So it's a little bit more dynamic than me writing on the whiteboard, erasing or drawing different or using different colors and things like that. So that is the descriptive statistics module or function inside the learn stats module here. Again, we are learning statistics, learning classical statistics with simple examples and supporting text, although supporting text TBD. <laughs> If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or other feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.